John B. Fairfax was one of the few people to emerge with any credit from his cousin Warwick's disastrous privatisation of Fairfax in 1987 and its painful aftermath. He absolutely carbon copied himself with the blonde curls. How can the child of three know whether it's a page one or page three story? Young Warwick Fairfax was still being bounced 30 years later. When the takeover dissolved under crippling debt, John B. Fairfax emerged with the company's rural and regional newspaper for a $20 million investment. He walked away, but if you like, determined that he was going to sort of make something of it, and particularly with the land, began building up slowly and patiently, but a, a rural empire. And of course, you can sort of say country newspapers, and at the end, at the height of it, I think he owned 260, as if they were small bickies, and some of them, some of them were un amazingly small bickies, but he had something like 15 or 20 dailies. He turned rural press into a $1 billion empire with shrewd strategies and prudent cost-cutting, while the Fairfax company floundered through wavering leadership and digital disruption. In terms of his personal characteristics, he was a statesman, a mentor to many. He constantly encouraged us to perform better, motivated us, was part of us, and in particular, I think he also, uh, if I can say this, uh, benefited from having a very, very great supporter in his wife Libby, who was constantly by his side through not only the highs but the lows. He received an Order of Australia for services to rural journalism. And no journalism of an independent kind can survive if it doesn't have both the financial and the moral support of people like John. It's sometimes not really understood by the reporter making the big story. He thought that it was the function of editors to set the policy of the paper. He also reserved to, his, to himself the right to disagree vehemently, but I was very much chuffed when he acquired the Canberra Times again that uh, we discussed editorial policy in broad things, but if he disagreed for Canberra Times editorial, he wrote a letter to the editor. I always published them with glee immediately, of course, because it emphasised to everybody else that this was not a person sending directions. <laughs> 